Hi, I'm Dr. Mark Reynolds. And I'm gonna help you sing and perform more like the top artists around the world. I'm a professional voice teacher, performance coach, and opera stage director. I've helped thousands of singers around the world learn the techniques and methods that got the top singers to where they are. And today I'm being joined by Sam Johnson. Hello, I'm a voice teacher. <laughs> <laughs> and we're voice teachers. Today we're going to be reacting to, teaching from, and analyzing Mr. Cho from Forestella as he sings speechless in eight languages. Here we go. Je vois la vague prête à me submerger, l'attaque a exalté ma colère. Voyez encore les vocaux ignorés, ma voix se noie dans le tonnerre. Pourtant j'y crois, la tête haute sans pleurer, et même si sont là, jamais je pourrais me Okay, how was his French? <laughs> <laughs> I actually really liked his R's. Like, the French sounded pretty authentic to me. Yeah. Um, what, what's your rule of singing in French? Flip or do the back R? You know, I, I go back and forth with that. For clarity, and when we're talking opera and classical, usually we're going for that flipped just because it's easier to understand and, and it's more intelligible when you're in this big arena. Mm. Um, but really, like if I'm doing art song or if I'm doing a song like this where it's more intimate, I'm, I prefer a more authentic sound, one that matches the speaking more than trying to adjust for singing. The more authentic it is to the speaking, the more I personally enjoy it. But that's going to be more of a preference call. What about you? I prefer just the spoken one. Um, for art song, I, I guess, I mean, I haven't sung a ton of arias in French, so I haven't had to work on that a lot. But for art song and pop music and stuff, I think just like flipping sounds kind of weird sometimes. It sounds almost a little too proper. And just for anyone who, just because we didn't explain it, uh, flipped R is more of a R, R, R. Uh, and then the back, the, what's it called? The R, R. The uvular kind of, R probably? Yeah, you, yeah, yeah. So it's in most spoken French, they'll go towards the uvular R. Uh, and then just sometimes people are really passionate about flipping their R's and singing. Yeah. It, it, I mean, what do you tell students if they're like they're trying to sing in a foreign language and they're really stressing about getting it correctly? Or or they or you watch a video like this and it's not perfect. Does it really bother you a lot? Or, or what's your response to that? Uh, I don't get as put off by it as some people. Yeah. Um, what What do you think? I, I'm the same, especially if I'm watching a pop song, or even you know, there, there's you can look and and watch uh, some of these big opera singers, like the three tenors would sing some pop type songs in English, right? Mm -hmm. And people kind of start making fun of them, or start like or bashing it, or get really distracted by that. But to me, it's more just it, it's flattering that they're making the effort to try, right? Totally. Um, so, I mean, the, the better it is, the more I applaud their effort. So I, I think what matters is really making the attempt and doing your best at making it work and trying to improve. But as an audience, it's about a, appreciating what we're seeing and the effort they're making. I do think that striving for clarity and for authenticity in another language is a very good thing. Um, but there's a point where little minutia like that kind of can take away from the authenticity rather yeah. than just letting you be present in it. And yeah. what when he just sang it in French, I was like, oh, cool, that's some nice French. The more you can just start going in that direction, making the attempt, my experience has been, even if the language isn't perfect and sung perfect, the majority of the world will appreciate the effort and applaud it and, and love you for it. Now, obviously, there'll be the haters out there that pick apart every single thing that's not perfect. But I think the key here is that if you're wanting to attempt a foreign language, if you're wanting to experiment with it, don't not do it because it seems like a huge barrier. It's not as big a barrier as you think. You just need someone who can help coach you through it. Please do it. Yeah. Please sing in 
many languages. It's good for you. <laughs> it's good for yeah. It's good for you vocally, but it also brings this music world tighter and closer together. It lets you reach out to a broader audience across the world, which is awesome. I love the singers like this one. He's bringing all these cultures together around this one piece of music, which is super exciting. It yeah, sounds good. It I think he's doing a great job. Really excellent job. What are you noticing with his voice so far? Are you noticing like differences in how he's producing the sound between the languages? I don't know if I would classify that they're different between the languages. He's definitely kind of modifying phrase to phrase. I was going to ask you a similar question. Uh, and, and that is, if you were asked what style is he singing in, what would you say? Man, I have no idea. He's singing, <laughs> but I... Does... I, I don't care about genre a lot of the time. I think that good singing is good singing, and it, it's just... It, he sounds versatile. Like, I mean, it's poppy musical theater, I guess. Um, but the way that he's producing the sounds, like, it's open enough. It sounds more trying to be theatery, um, where pop a lot of times tends to have a little bit more of a closed-off, um, less traditionally resonant sound. Uh, with this, it seems like he's going toward that a lot more. And I haven't heard the singer before. Yeah. Uh, have you listened to him before? I, you know, I, I did a, a video on them singing all together with Forestella, one of their Bohemian Rhapsody uh, mm. Queen covers, which was awesome. But you, you went, you said something about it sounds more music theatery. What is it that that brings that to your attention and makes you kind of associate that? Uh. Part of it is his mouth shape. It's like very precise and it's opening a, a, about the same amount every time. And it's quite a big opening. It's not yeah. just, it's not like he's just here, but it's all the way here. And it's opening that way every single time. Yeah. Um, and just, it's too precise. Like that's what I kind of associate with music theater a lot of the time. And maybe that's wrong, but... It's it's like a focus a focus on diction yeah. and a focus on an open, more rounded sound rather than just like uh, how you would pronounce it for speech entirely. And it's it's interesting because he sounds really authentic with his speech, yeah. um, it, and it sounds clear and authentic. But we still get that open, more resonant sound. So that's kind of why I'm thinking like yeah, this is kind of music theatery. Uh, just because it's too crisp. Pop music usually isn't this crisp. Yeah, you know, and, and I think one of the reasons for that is because when we're doing music theater, it is really, that text is really important, the storytelling and getting each specific word. And pop, a lot of times we get repetition or we expect that our audience that they really like it are going to listen to it over and over again or go and, and, and Google the lyrics or something, right? So we can be a little... I don't want to be sloppy, but a little less formal. Uh, no, I think sloppy is great. Like it's with a lot of my students, I find that they are so caught up in their head about being understood yeah. that they uh, it it just kind of wrecks their progress. Yeah. Where yeah. Um, it's it's generally a lot better to find a nice legato line first and yes. then add in these kind of separations later once you already know what everything feels like. Yeah. Um, and. All of these things we're getting super picky because he sounds good. Like yeah. there's nothing that we can, yeah, at least so nothing is popping out to me that I'm like, I want to fix that real bad. Yeah. I asked that question because my brain kept cycling through, well, there's operatic. He, he's kind of living in the in the same realm of like Juan Diego Flores, this lighter, mm -hmm. higher, 
easier, brighter sound. Um, and his vibrato is a little bit faster. Then he kind of has this music theater kind of sound to it. And, and there's pop. And, and, and like you, I love when people just kind of break all the rules of which style is it that drives me crazy when it doesn't matter what style it is right it's just help mm -hmm. like you're saying healthy singing good singing is good singing music theater is also kind of weird because it borrows from so many different genres and then it doesn't become it's not like a hundred percent pop music and a hundred percent music theater it's it's like a place in between which is weird and so theater pieces borrow from every genre there's like more classical leaning music theater there's more pop there's more rock, there's more country, but none of them are pop, rock, or country. And so if you sing it the exact same way, it'll sound kind of weird on stage. And so you have to make some of these modifications just to make it sound like theater. Right. But it's like the subtleties are very weird. Yeah. And I think the lesson to come away from is to not get wrapped up in trying to pigeonhole singers or songs into a specific style or genre. Absolutely. What does that do to service? I'm I'm not sure it, it serves anybody. Ich bleib nicht straflos, lass mich nicht besiegen. Ich werd euch nicht erliegen. Und ich schwör, ich werd's niemals schweigen. Schweigen auf der Schwurbit kann mich niemals brechen. Ich werd für alle sprechen. Also, some of these languages like German and Russian that are a little bit stereotypically harsh, uh, that use a lot more glottal and everything, he doesn't sound really harsh when he's going to those languages. And he's still getting like glottal onsets, which is necessary for the language, but it's not in a way that's constricting his throat like crazy. It's just like, oh yeah, this is how we start. Um, I I've, I love the glottal. I think it's an excellent way of like getting your chords together to mm. adduct about the same amount throughout the range. But a lot of people hate glottal. What are, you th what are your thoughts on that? I think being able to explore the extremes, so being able to have control and use the glottal as a way to swing the pendulum back to uh, more chord closure, if you is really helpful when you have someone who's really struggling to to get that clean sound right um just like if we have someone that is overly pressy overly pressurized and pushing too hard sometimes we kind of swing towards the aspirate side of things where we want them to try to use over we want them to try to use too much air so so it's about helping singers explore the extremes of any continuum and in this case we're talking glottal to aspirate so that they understand its limits and how to get both and then hopefully they arrive at a balanced middle point as kind of their home base right mm -hmm. he's living on this g4 <laughs> he's just spending so much time on g4 and it sounds it sounds really easy it doesn't sound pressed at yeah. all as it kind of tends to yeah. um Man, I'm just trying to think about what I can even talk about with his his well, technique because well, it's yeah. It's good. It, I mean, it's it's just really solid and, and clean, right? I mean, it, it's just really really well done. Question for you: I'm going to flip the question back that you had of, of that you were asking me earlier that I don't think I really answer very well. <laughs> Are you hearing any changes when he's switching between languages? There's something that's just inherently him. Um, yeah, it doesn't sound like he's trying to make each language a character. It's just. A different language a different yeah. set of everything whatever but it's still how he would do it which is kind of rare most people like they get the sound of the language in their head and they do everything to try to sound like that rather than but it's it's like not right a lot of the time so it it sounds really natural to me him switching back and forth between all of these languages and i'm not fluent in any of them but yeah. I'm not bothered at it by it at all. Yeah, I love it. I, I love that he, if I wasn't paying attention to language at all, I'm not really hearing any big changes in his vocal production. Exactly. Based he, on he that He seems that so text. secure in that, that he's able to make the changes to the vowel. Um, well, actually, he's not even like changing the vowel. He's just 
the order of those vowels. Like all yeah. of the individual building blocks that he's worked on, he's just putting together in a different order. And yeah. so it works really well because he's not trying to reinvent the wheel with every single language. Yeah. So question when we stop again. So pay attention. Do you believe him or not? Do you believe that he really saying or not? Let's see what, what we see here. It's weird because like the acting doesn't look like music theater to me. The acting is like how a pop person would perform this stuff. Right. Um, which makes sense because he's a pop person. He's not a music theater person. And so acting in that way and the storytelling is maybe not his number one priority all the time. Right. But it's, I mean, it's telling story in a slightly different way. That's where I'm getting like really, really picky. And another thing I noticed before I forget it is I doubt that that was a live recording. Yeah. Um, and I think that he might be over, over showing it, like exaggerating what he would normally do uh, with his mouth. Yeah. Um, if I'm getting like extremely picky and he was in my, this studio working with me, I would just see if he has to move that much to get the tone that he wants. Because there is, like, it's just a really big mouth. Yeah. Yeah. He's working really hard to get all those tongue, lips, teeth, everything really engaged like kind of hyper engaged right right and that i mean it it is helping sound like music theater but i don't know if it's my favorite way sure. i i would i prefer a little bit more of a relaxed a little bit more smooth blended line right and you know what is, interesting thing to me and, and the reason i asked that is because for example, if we were to talk about opera singers like Pavarotti, right? You listen to him and he's so believable. You hear the whole story in their voice, right? Mm -hmm. But then you watch him on stage, it's like, eh. In this case, I think, like you're saying, he's telling a really great story with his, his body in a really kind of pop style. And I believe that there's emotions going on there. But what actually convinces me the most that he's at least thinking of the story and tapping into those emotions are the nuances in his voice. Mm. I don't think you can get that nuance of change in style that's so fluid and in expression and dynamics and in accents and unaccented syllables without connecting to the story on some level you know what i mean yeah there's just too much going on like if you try to hyper manage it with left brain and say i'm going to do this because i know that this little thing with my voice makes it perceived as a certain style like doing that all the time you can't keep up right and it starts becoming just it, it's not good yeah but an emotion will do all of that stuff for you so if you think about the story then all of those little subtleties that you kind you still practice them when you're working on like learning things and practice Definitely. but when you're performing if you get into that mindset it just destroys you yeah and so i i don't know i really enjoyed here you know in in watching that though there were like moments where i was like i don't know completely what's going on in his mind and how he's trying to express himself because it's also kind of a strange situation where it's just he's in one position in a simple room and that's a really hard situation to act in Mm. the core of it really came down to did I believe that he was really invested in the story and the emotion and he gave me enough clues to say yes and then when I wasn't seeing what I was expecting that let me then think well then I wonder why his body is expressing it this way mm. even though when it's not what I'm expecting does that mean he's doing it right or wrong no it's just his own unique way of expressing things so I know we've talked about it a little bit before but what 
do you think the main differences that a singer should have in mind are when going between acting for pop music and acting for opera or music theater? That's a really excellent question. And there are a lot of different opinions on this. My opinion is actually that they're a lot more similar and should be more similar than most people feel comfortable agreeing with. Um, and in that, that most people feel like it should be like, they should be super, super different. The difference to me is that the music calls for different kinds of emotion intensity. They call for a different way of thinking about the story, a different sound, which then causes our body to react in a different way. Mm. Uh, but the pop singers that I, I'm really engaged by and love watching, if you put them on a stage and turn this into a musical and just put sets, costumes, and props in their hands, it, it would work just fine. It would flow. Yeah. <laughs> um, it, it would be the same thing. Good, good acting is just good communicating. And that's the same across the board. You can say like things like metal or something like that. There are more stylized gestures that we associate with a style um, and that kind of have built its own tradition. So we need to be aware of those. But I still think just like good singing is good singing, no matter what style you're singing, good acting or good communicating with an audience is the same no matter what style or genre you're, you're doing as well. And it, you have to still engage in the story, still engage in just good communication. Sam, it's been awesome to have you on here with us today. Thank you again for having me. I always love it, and it's so much fun. <laughs> Thanks. If you want a voice lesson, a performance coaching, or just want <laughs> someone to help you sing easier or help your band perform at a consistently higher level, book a time with us. You can find us at vocalese.net, and you can also find me on my website at mrperformingartstudio.com. We'd love to work with you and, and talk with you more. Bye. Bye. Thank you. See you next time. <laughs>